students welcome to the second part of seventh lecture i am assistant professor sugan gupta and as we were discussing in the previous part we were solving the numericals on diode series and parallel configurations in the last part we saw how to solve the numericals on series diode configuration now in this part we will solve some of the parallel diode configurations network so uh, as we are saying the names diode series and parallel will come across certain networks where the diodes will be connected in series or in parallel but we do not have to waste our time in thinking about whether the diode um, given configuration network is diode series or diode parallel we just have to follow a strategy and we have to start solving the numericals so first of all as we have discussed in the previous part also we first of all recognize or determine the state of diode that whether it is reverse biased or forward biased accordingly we replace it with its eq valence well circuit whether with an open circuit or whether with a battery of 0.7 volt and then we start solving the numerical by applying kirchhoff's voltage law mostly and sometimes we can also use kirchhoff's current law now let's uh, we have a numerical in front of us on your screens and it's a parallel diode configuration so we have to find out the given parameters over here that is v not i1 id1 id2 you can see all the parameters denoted in the numerical as well in the network as well so let's start solving all these parameters first of all just see whether the diodes are forward or reverse biased i can see that both the diodes are forward biased because the p side p semiconductor of diode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative uh, that is sorry uh, the n semiconductor is connected to the negative terminal of the battery similar is the case over here so both the diodes are forward biased now let's replace these diodes with the eq valence circuits iron so this is the circuit now if we apply the kvl in the first loop we will be able to find i think i1 so let's start applying kvl from a space where is a simple wire that is minus 10 plus now this is resistance let's convert it into voltage 0.33 into 10 raised to the power 3 into i1 Plus point seven. That's all. Now we have all the voltages here in this equation, and from here I one will come out to be twenty eight point one eight milliampere. So that is the I no I one from this equation. All right. So we all have got I one equals twenty eight point one eight milliampere. Now let's calculate id1 and id2 also now id1 id1 and id2 you can see both the branches are in parallel with each other and both the branches are having the same condition we have a 0.7 volt battery in this branch and we have the same 0.7 volt battery in this branch so when the conditions in two branches are same and by the rule that voltages in both the branches will be same this is one thing so when will be the voltage is same 
because you have the same condition so therefore the current from here will divide in two parts is dividing getting divided into two parts i is coming i1 is coming from here and getting divided into two parts and the parts where it is being divided have the same condition both the branches have same condition exactly the same therefore id1 will be equal to id2 and we know that i1 is the sum of id1 and id2 it has been divided into two parts and when both are same that means you can just have this because this is both are equal you can replace id2 by id1 and you will get id1 as 14.09 milliampere isn't it and which is same as that of id2 so you have calculated id1 id2 and i1 now only the thing that is left is v0 in parallel voltages are same that means whatever voltage is there in this branch same is the v0 and you can easily see that the voltage in this branch is 0.7 volt so v0 is 0.7 volt so i think we have calculated all the four parameters and this is how we solve the numerical so I hope you may find it easy. Now let's try to solve another numerical and the last numerical for this lecture. This is the numerical given to you. Start solving it and just verify your answers. I'll start the numerical after two or three seconds so that you may verify your answers and try to solve them correctly. First of all, uh, we will see whether the diodes are forward or reverse biased. I can see this is D1 is forward and D2 is also forward. Then I, repla I will replace it with the equivalent circuits. I have replaced it with the EQLN circuits and now I'll apply the KVL in the first loop and try to solve whatever I get. So applying KVL in this loop I get I am starting it with the place where there is a simple wire. So it is I2 into 5.6 into 10 raised to the power 3 minus 20 plus 0.7 plus 0.7 is equals to 0 and I2 is equals to 18.6 20 minus 1.4 so from here I2 comes out to be 3.32 milliampere now I am done with I2 now I apply KVL in the second loop and I'll find out from a simple wire I will start I1 into 3.3 into 10 raised to the power 3 minus 0.7 is equals to 0 I1 equals to 0.7 by 3.3 into 10 raised to the power 3 and the answer I get is 0 0.212 milliampere so this is the I1 that I am getting I have got this I2. Now I am left with ID2. Mm, ID2. Now you can see from the network that I uh, here I2 is flowing. Alright. 
Now I2 is being divided into two parts that is ID2 and ID1. So ID2 is equals to, uh, I'm sorry, I2 is equals to ID2 and I1. All right. Now from here ID2 is equals to I2 minus I1. You have both the values. And from here you will get ID2 is equals to 3.11 milliampere. So this is how we solve the numericals on diode networks. So you may solve other numericals also from various books. And let me know whether you find any problem in solving those numericals or not. Good day. Thank you all.